Assalamu alaikum. Today we will talk about the aesthetic and basic properties of uh, metals and non-metals in the periodic table. Um, so first let's see what happens when uh, non-metallic oxides react with water. For example, carbon dioxide, when it reacts with water, it forms carbonic acid. Another example is sulfur. The um, sulfate here, when it reacts with water, it gives the sulfuric acid. So apparently, when the non-metal oxides react with water, they form acids. On the other hand, when the metallic oxides react with water, bases are produced. For example, when sodium oxide reacts with water, it produces sodium hydroxide. When potassium oxide reacts with water, also potassium hydroxide is produced. So, the bases which are soluble in water are called alkalis, are called alkalis, like the sodium hydroxide. So the bases and the acids react with each other in what's known as neutralization, producing water and salt. For example, we have 2NaOH plus H2CO3. So this gives Na2CO3 plus 2H2O. So we have here sodium carbonate, which is a salt, and we have water. So this is called neutralization. We have to know also that acidic oxides or non-metallic oxides react with alkalis uh, also producing salts and water. For example, the carbon dioxide, which is a non-metallic oxide, uh, when it reacts with here the uh, sodium hydroxide, it produces Na2CO3 positive H2O. So this is sodium carbonate, which is a salt, and we have here also water. And on the other hand, the basic oxides react with acids, also forming salts and water. For example, the sodium oxide, which is a basic oxide or a metallic oxide, reacts with water or, or reacts with hydrochloric acid, which is an acid, and it gives um, 2 and ACL, two molecules of sodium chloride, and a water molecule. So here's a salt and water. Now, let's see how the, the acidic and basic properties change uh, according to the distribution of elements inside the periodic table. But before we say that, we have to remember that metals are found before the non-metals in the periodic table as we go from left to right, because the atomic number of metals is less than this of non-metals. So first we have metals, then we have non-metals. And as we have just mentioned, that metals form basic oxides, non-metals form acetic oxide. So apparently, as we move from left to right through the periods, the acetic property increases because we approach the non-metals, or we can say that the basic property decreases as we go far from the metals. As metals pr uh, produce basic oxides and non-metals produce 
acidic oxides. Now, in groups, as we go from up to down, for example, let's take group 1A. Uh, we know that the uh, most element with the metallic property is cesium, and so, as we go from up to down, cesium is found at the bottom of the first group, or 1A, so cesium has the most metallic property, and accordingly, it will form the most uh, strong basic oxide. So, uh, this is how the acidic and basic properties change, or vary, according to the distribution of metals and non-metals in the periodic table. Now, let's see how to know if we have a hydroxide molecule, which means that we have a molecule plus an OH group, a hydroxide group. How to know if this is acidic or basic? Simply, if the MOH disintegrates or breaks into an M plus and an OH group. So accordingly, here we have a positive ion, and we know that metals produce positive ions. So basically, this will be a base because this is a metal. While if the MOH breaks into an oxide group plus a hydrogen atom so this oxide group is negative and accordingly if this is a negative so the M here is the molecule of a non-metal and this will be an acid so this is the difference here so this works as follows we have the molecule with a positive charge and we have um, hydrogen with a positive charge and we have oxygen with a negative charge. What happens here is between the positive molecule and the positive hydrogen atom of course they have the same charge so the, there will be a repulsion force. While between the um, so this will be a repulsion. Between the positive M ion and the negative oxygen ion, and between the positive hydrogen ion and the negative oxygen ion, there is an attraction force. So, when this disintegrates or breaks, if the attraction force between M and O is higher than the attraction force between O and H, so, naturally, O will be attracted to M and the bond between O and H will be uh, less um, stronger, so it will break down. And this will produce an M plus O negative, and the hydrogen ion will be a lot. So this is what happens in producing an acid. While in a base, what happens is the attraction force between the oxygen and hydrogen is higher than that between the molecule and the oxygen. So accordingly, the oxygen will be attracted to hydrogen and the M plus molecule will be a lot and this will, be, will produce a base. Now, the attraction between the M plus molecule and the oxygen, uh, or the M plus ion, sorry, and the oxygen ion depends on the charge and the volume of this uh, ion. Now, for example, in studio, we have NaOH. Let's plug in sodium in this formula. We know that sodium uh, hydroxide is basic because sodium is a metal, so it will produce an Na plus 
and a hydroxide group. So this is just like that of the base. Now, um, here we have an attraction force between sodium and oxygen and another attraction force between hydrogen and oxygen. The volume of the sodium atom is large, but at the same time we can notice that it only has one positive charge. So the attraction between sodium and oxygen is not as strong as that between the oxygen and hydrogen. And accordingly, what happens is that the oxygen is attracted to hydrogen, producing a hydroxide group, and sodium is left alone. That's why, um, mainly, metals produce positive ions plus a hydroxide group, and that's why metal oxides are basic oxides. But on the other hand, in the non-metals like chlorine, the chlorine atom has a uh, small volume, and on the other hand, it has a big charge. So this increases the attraction force between it and the oxygen, more than the attraction force between the oxygen and the hydrogen, and accordingly, um, it's ionized like this. It produces a negative oxide group and a hydrogen atom, so it's ionized as an acid. Now, the strength of the acid depends on the number of oxygen atoms binded to the molecule forming the acid. For example, let's look at these acids. We have the orthosiliconic acid, it's weak, and its formula is H4SiO4. Then the orthophosphoric acid, which is moderate, and its formula is H3PO4. Sulfuric acid, which is a strong acid, its formula is H2SO4. And finally, we have the perchloric acid, it's very strong, and its formula is HClO4. Now we can notice that um, the number of hydrogen atoms here decrease. We have 4, 3, 2, then 1. On the other hand, as the number of hydrogen atoms decrease, the strength of the acid um, increases. So the formula of the acid may be written like this. We have MO, so there are oxygen atoms. These are binded to the molecule, uh, let's say they have the number N, then we have the hydroxide group, and this has the number of M. So if the number of oxygen here, or if N, is higher than M, with a great value, with a great difference, so this acid will be strong. Now let's apply this to the ones found here. So, in the orthosiliconic acid, we have an equal number of oxygen and hydrogen atoms. So the formula is like this. Now here we don't have any oxygen, uh, sorry, this is, the four is outside the brackets. Does, this describes the whole oxide, uh, hydroxide group. So here we don't have any oxygen atoms binded to the silicon, that's why this is weak. The next one, and we have H3PO4. So we have PO then OH3. So here we have an oxygen atom binded to phosphorus. That's why this is a little bit more stronger. The next one is a sulfuric acid. We have H. Here we have um, SO2, then OH2. We have two oxygen atoms here binded to sulfur. This is way more stronger than the previous one. And finally, here um, we have ClO3 and just one hydroxide group. Now, this is the most strong one here. We have ClO3, three oxygen atoms binded to chloride, while we have only one oxygen atom binded to hydrogen. Uh, that's how 
uh, the strong of acid is determined according to the number of oxygen atom binded to the molecule forming the acid. And this is it for today. Next time we will talk about something called the oxidation number. And until then, I thank you for watching and see. Stay alive.